Hi, my name is Dick Schager, and I'm the agriculture correspondent for Western Wisconsin Journal. Welcome to the show. And today we're going to talk about St. Croix County and farming and its status and some of the other attributes uh, of farming here in St. Croix County. And my guest is the county agent, county ex agriculture agent, uh, that is from uh, Baldwin, Wisconsin, and his name is Ryan Sterry. And I'm going to let him introduce yourself. Where, where were you educated and how, what does a St. Croix County Extension agent do? Yeah, thanks. It's good to be here. Uh, just a little bit of background to myself. I grew up south of Eau Claire, uh, small farm. We had a few dairy cows, a few beef cows, and uh, a few others mixed in with the menagerie there. Uh, went to school in a college in UW River Falls, got a degree in dairy science and farm business, uh, ended up going to Madison um, to further my education a little bit, again, focusing on the dairy production area, uh, working some things with animal health and that. But really, uh, my boss in Madison worked for Extension, uh, so that kind of piqued my interest in that. And uh, long story short, I started out in Extension in Polk County, just north of here, was there for just short of four years, and, and now I'm down here in St. Croix County. Uh, so I, I work in the egg program for UW Extension, St. Croix County, uh, but I'm just one piece of extension in St. Croix County. Um, we have agriculture, but we also have people, um, P Clean that works with community development, um, Marie Witzel that works with 4-H, Joanne Spray that works with families and money management, personal finance and those things. Uh, so it, it, UW Extension is one big umbrella that we all work under. So I, I just have my, my little piece of the pie uh, in our office over in Baldwin. Yeah, I grew up on a farm too in northwestern Minnesota and we worked very closely with 4-H and, and other things with the Agriculture Extension Agent, who happened to be from Washington County, which is right across the river. Right over there, yeah. They were, you know, 400 miles up northwest. But uh, very, very uh, helpful for us because, um, uh, well, it brought a new perspective on a lot of things and as things were changing and so forth. So, and they'd come out without us asking them we'd have meetings in 4-H, oh, yep. so there was always education as part of it. So welcome, that's great. Now I should tell you, uh, Ryan Sterry is located in Baldwin, and for you that are not from St. Croix County, Baldwin is the, almost the geographic center of, uh, of St. Croix County. And uh, the other thing before we uh, go talking about farming, I gotta tell you that if you drive for, on I-94 from Hudson, which is on the very western edge and on the St. Croix River to the eastern edge of the county, which is some 30 miles beyond the road, you will not see the beautiful farms. <laughs> you will see a lot of beautiful country, but you won't see the beautiful farms. The farms in St. Croix County are either north of there or south of there, or, and there's a lot of beautiful farmland. So before we do that, let's talk about, and we'll go to slide number three, what is the farm, who it, what size are they, and who's on them? and we'll refer to the slide. Yeah, well, and one of the reasons I was really excited to do this is I spend most of my time working with farmers, but you know, we're getting to the point where most people are two, if not three generations removed from the farm. So farming looks a lot different now than say, even when I, the farm I was used to when I was a kid or, or when you were a kid and whatnot. And so when we look at the, the farm numbers, what we're seeing is that the middle-sized farms, there's getting to be fewer and fewer of those. Uh, there's still a lot of them out there, but that's where we're seeing the change. So either- middle-sized, you're referring like from 100 to 200 acres? About 100 to 200 acres, somewhere in there. Uh, so we're seeing increases in, in the smaller farms that might be 40 acres or, or something less than 100. And we're seeing growth in some of the larger farms that might be four or 500 acres or more. And so we have a lot of those mid-sized farms left, but, but we're seeing some change there. Uh, and either that they're probably getting a little bit more specialized, maybe not run so many acres, but a little bit more intensive or a little bit more higher value crops that they're gonna be producing, or they're rolling into larger farms. And so we have this, um, I think a lot of people have this image in their, their heads of the red barns out in the country and the cows out in the pasture. There's still some of those there, but that's really changing, especially in the last 10 or 15 years. And you should also mention when you talk about small intensive farming, you're talking about somebody who has 40 acres and grows nothing but vegetables and <laughs> hand toils uh, 
and uh, the whole bit, maybe organic, maybe not. And maybe, maybe not. It, it could be vegetables for CSA, which would be like a community supported agriculture where you can buy a share uh, and you'll get you know your little box with whatever produce is produced from, from the farm that week. Uh, grass fed beef, yep. uh, some of these more, you know, more high uh, value products, but probably a little bit more I intense to produce. Right, okay. And at the upper end, we're talking about farms, the middle is shrunk in terms of size, so the upper end, we're getting larger farms as well. And basically, the larger farms are in dairy in St. Croix County or in crops in like corn. Crops. Yeah, okay. and there's a whole spectrum there uh, of what we call a larger farm. Uh, some of them may have hundreds of cows, uh, but I know there's a fair number with the way the farm economy is right now, uh, if you want to bring the next generation to the farm or another family, it's hard to do that on the same number of cows you milked 20 or, or 30 years ago. So it's not uncommon that you look at these old barns in the country, you can see uh, how the additions went on over the years. And we're going through that now where you may be milking 50 or 60 cows and your daughter wants to come home and farm with you. Well, you might have to add 20, 30 cows or, or whatever that number is to, to make that economically feasible. So it, it may be a 70 or 100 cow dairy now, but that's to support that extra family yeah. off of it. Uh, and we have a number of those. So what basically, how important is agriculture to St. Croix County and what's the standing right now in terms of uh, what we produce? And yeah. Well, as someone who's worked with agriculture, uh, there's a lot of good things about St. Croix County for farming. Very diverse, uh, good climate. Uh, if you look at, for say, dairy production, uh, our, our cows do extremely well compared to other parts of the, of the state or especially other parts of the country. Uh, and we have some unique microclimates. Uh, I, I never thought in my career I'd be spending uh, a lot of time with wine grapes or things like that, but all of a sudden we got the varieties now that can fit this area. Uh, so you know, we can do some of the specialty production, but we also have good soils, um, high crop yields. Uh, just north of here, uh, I, I have to cheat because it's just north enough to fit into Polk County, uh, but the most efficient corn grower, not, not the most yield, but the most efficient, we looked at um, what their inputs were versus what their outputs were, uh, was just north of here. Uh, so most people think of the, mm -hmm. the big farms as being down by Madison in that area, and they got lots of good farmland down there, but we also have it here too. Yep. And we have lots of rolling uh, open spaces too between like Baldwin and New Richmond and that are not small, the big ones. I mean, they're, they're beautiful. Right, and, and you really see some differences when, when you look throughout the county. You get to New Richmond, uh, say between 65 and Highway 63, mm -hmm. you have that, a lot of that flat, um, mm -hmm. little bit uh, drier soil, uh, what we probably call more like a prairie. You get south of 94 in the old galley area, get it some wetter soil, still very productive but much different farming yep. than say north of 94. Yep. So we've got the gamut. Yeah. But okay, how about in terms of what we produce, uh, still the number one production in the county though is dairy, right? W when, yeah, you look, corn. when you look at economically, yeah, because dairy is a value added product. I mean, mm -hmm. you're putting the corn and the hay and that to the cow to produce something which should be worth a little bit more value, which would be the milk. Uh, and we also have four uh, dairy processing plants left in the county. And so we're not only producing the milk, but a lot of that's being produced into cheese and whatnot r right here. Uh, so if you want to talk about value added, you really can add the numbers up when you look at dairy. Uh, but overall, we're seeing momentum in, in grains. Uh, there's more corn acres, there's more soybean acres. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no denying that, especially in the last few years here. So uh, let's look at, uh, at slide number eight, which is yep. gross uh, sales by commodity. And you'll see that by far the largest sales is milk. It's still in milk, yep. Okay, now, why isn't corn or soybeans on there? Uh, well, the grains got uh, lumped together in how these numbers were calculated. So, so that'd be in that second category there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it, they're growing, but the, the advantage dairy has over that is we're, we're taking something and trying to make a little more value product 
out of it. Not mm -hmm. that corn and soybeans aren't valuable, but in most cases, you harvest the corn, you take it to elevator, and that's it. With the dairy, we're, we're trying to create a product that, um, you know, both on the quality side and quantity, uh, that we're doing a little bit more with it. So it's easier to put a higher dollar value okay. on it then. Uh, but you know, we're starting to see some of that in the, in the grains. It, it may not be showing up here, but I, I think of the distillery uh, by New Richmond there uh, mm -hmm. that does like the specialty vodka and that. That would be something that's going to put a higher value on what, say, our corn and wheat and, and those products would be trying to take it and make something a little bit more out of it. And so historically, we've been able to do that with dairy. And yeah, I think we're starting to go there with the grains, but um, yeah. more progress to be done there. So even though the price of corn is sky high and the price of wheat sky high and all that, it's still more productive, at least here in the county, by and large, to have very good dairy. Right, and, and you got to look at it long term because uh, we can pick years out that are good or bad um, for grains or, or dairy. Um, so I'm sure there's one or two years where I could find out of here that the grains numbers would look a lot higher than it is. But for a long term average, that's where we're at. Now we're going to look at slide number six, and that's dairy farms and the number of dairy farms. So our production's up, but when we look at those numbers. Right, and, and this is what. Um, I was trying to, to talk a little bit about when we're talking about the changing size and, and numbers of farms that uh, the dairy farm numbers are declining, not quite as steep as say uh, when you look back in the 80s and early 90s, but still we're, we're losing dairy farms. There's no doubt about that, but they're changing. Um, we're so much more productive per cow now than we were in the past, and, and there's multiple factors for that. It's uh, the genetic selection, the way we feed the cows, we're, we're more efficient. Uh, and there's probably, uh, on average, more cows per farm, and I don't know the exact number, uh, but we're probably getting around, you know, an average herd size of 75, 80 cows, mm -hmm. versus you go back to the 80s, it was probably closer to 30, 35. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, the other one, I, 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 while we're talking about that, is yep. uh, slide number four, which is primary occupation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and the slide is showing. What, what can you comment on that? Uh, for someone that works a lot with numbers, I find this really interesting. Uh, but I've definitely had extreme opinions one way or another on this. There's two ways to look at this. Uh, one would be is if you think of the farm in traditional sense, um, you, we have fewer full-time farmers and, and we're growing number they we'd call part-time farmers. I mean, mm -hmm. just looking at the numbers, that's what that says. Mm -hmm. Now, you could look at the part-time farmers in a number of different ways. Some people say, well, it's just a hobby. Uh, I, I know some of them are a lot more than a hobby. And so that's what the numbers don't tell us is what's actually yeah. happening on those farms. Yeah, yeah. I, I found it very interesting in, in, in slide two that the number of farms basically is very consistent. Yeah. Total I mean, number. So if some, you look at total number, it doesn't mean anything. Right. We've had some dips over the time and then it came back up a little bit. Uh, it declined a little bit in the last farm census, but not by a lot. No. Uh, but again, that, that's all how, you, how we all define a farm. And I think every person has a little bit different, different definition to themselves of how they look at that. But when we start looking at these farms that are doing some of the specialty production, it may be vegetables uh, or, or whatnot, that they don't fit into what our traditional sense of farm may be, we start adding those up. And we do get to this 1800 number for farms. And I think that's real. Uh, and that's I think that's a really important thing to talk about because there's 1,800 farms in Sacred County. I mean, yeah. so if you want an indicator that farming is still alive and well in the area, I think that's a, a prime key to that. Yeah, I noticed on a lot of these statistics, we rank sixth out of the 72 counties in agricultural production in a lot of items singly. I yeah. mean, which is very, very good. And both the, uh, either be vegetable or crop side mm -hmm. or animal side. Yeah. Uh, and even if you look at dairy, we're not in the top 10 in Wisconsin for counties anymore, but we're in the top 80 for all counties in the nation. I have 2,000 some counties, Sanker County is 82nd 
for milk production, which, which is pretty amazing when you look at the whole nation. Yes, that is. And cheese, of course, we're number one. But uh, let's look at the milk prices, because yeah. this is what everybody looks at and they are always talking about. And this is a very interesting slide, which is slide number 11. This would right? be 11, yes. Yeah. Tell, tell me what you think about that. We've really seen a change over time in how prices are paid. Uh, and you can look at this for corn, soybeans, beef cattle, might be a little bit more pronounced differences for dairy. But we look at the mid, late 90s, and we started to see more volatility. Uh, you know, we think of the, the 80s was a big ch time of change for farming. Well, you look at the late 90s and 2000s, it, it's going to be go down in history as another big time of change in farming in that we saw record highs in prices in some years, but we also saw some extreme lows. And so before we were talking about, I, I can't recall which slide, but looking at the value of farm production for their commodities, yeah you got to look at it more long term because we can the differences between the high and low years is so dramatic right now uh, as we're talking as we're getting ready here uh, for example 2009 for milk prices you can go back to a time in the late 70s early 80s when the milk price was the same and I won't tell you which year I was born uh, <laughs> but I know farmers that got paid the same for their milk in 2009 as it did before I was born and the rest of the world has changed a tremendous amount in that short time. Right. And so in the grocery store, the non-farm person, the, the consumer, you're seeing the highs. And I know yeah. that's a pinch when um, mm -hmm. milk gets up to $20 to, for per hundredweight to the farmer. The price per gallon in the store mm -hmm. is going to go up with that too. So we're on this roller coaster ride now uh, that we haven't been on before. And as long as we're on that, we've got to talk about two more things before we get on to that. And that is the price of grain, the roller coaster price of, uh, of, uh, of what we produce. So slide number 16 is the price of corn grain. Yep. And so when we look back at this, and it, this one goes back to early 90s, uh, we saw a peak, you know, it was pretty consistent, and then we hit 95, 96, uh, really tight supplies. Uh, but things came back into line, uh, late 80s, early 2000s, but now we're starting to see these years where we get really pinched on supply again. And of course, what happens when supplies are short, price goes up to offset it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the flip side of this is input prices have gone up too. When we look at fuel, fertilizer, yeah. the farmer has to pay for that at the pump just like mm -hmm. uh, everybody else does when you have to fill up your car. And so, and so that's what we don't see in these prices is the cost of putting these crops in yeah. has gone up too. Yeah. Um, uh, we might as well look at the slide number 17, which is the, uh, the price received for soybeans at the same time. You know, the, both of them, it's an all-time high right now. Y yep, that's where we're getting at. Yeah, I mean, just really, really high. So, but, but that's how farming has changed. We're now affected by a global market, just like many other businesses are. Mm -hmm. um, when you talk about the crop reports now, uh, we see things come across my desk about how the crop is doing in Brazil for soybeans because we know Brazil is a top soybean producer. So if they have a high crop, it affects the prices here. If they have a low crop, like happened last year, all of a sudden U.S. soybeans look a little bit more attractive and the prices up here start inching up there a little bit. The bottom line is if we took St. Crowley County by itself and there's a trend across the country that we want to see if we can uh, sustain ourselves within the county by having enough food production and, and so forth just to feed our own people. So St. Croix County not only could feed everybody in St. Croix County, they could, they're also feeding part of the rest of they're the world. Per, exactly. In fact, the good part of it. Yeah. Yep. It's just how that all looks. Yep. You know, what, you know, is it a bee farm, a dairy farm, a crop mm -hmm. farm, vegetables? the yep. size of it, we got that's, it all. All, th that's all what we're going through now. Uh, mm -hmm. th there's this big momentum for the local foods movement, mm -hmm. and, and I don't think I had it in here, no, but, yeah. but we see the sales for that growing each year, but we're still working on the infrastructure for it, and, and so there's been a lot of progress made there, but I still think there's a long ways to go on that. Uh, so there, there's a little uh, unknown out there, and. Uh, it depends on how you look at risk, if, if, if you're a person like me that worries about it, or but there's opportunities out there yeah. too. So it, 
what we're going through is, is how these farms are going to look, yeah, and kind of where we're going in the future. So if you really want to, if you want a chance and see more about farms, you're going to have a couple of chances in the near future. In July is the... St. Curry St. County Fair, yep. Tell us about the fair. Uh, it's the 20th through 24th. Uh, new this year is uh, some of the projects are going to be able to come in uh, on Wednesday night and the conference judging is going to kick off a little bit earlier, but the main part of the fair still starts on Thursday. Uh, I work a little bit more with the dairy cattle and the animal side of the fair, and so there's a new dairy barn uh, that's being constructed, and so we're going to have a grand opening for that. But again, it's a good chance to see the youth of the county uh, working with these projects, um, and there's lots of parts of the fair that, that I don't get to see. Uh, but if you want to see the animals, get up close, see all the hard work these kids are, are doing to get these animals ready for the fair. Uh, and I think that's one thing that I can't emphasize enough for uh, the person, that, the average fair goer, it's one or two days, but for these kids, they've been working with these animals since last winter, trying to get them ready for the fair. And it's not, you'll see a lot of dairy cows, but it's not just dairy cows. No, no, not by any means. Uh, the horse project keeps growing every year, uh, but there's beef, swine, sheep, poultry, uh, the list goes on. And by the way, the St. Croix County Fair is in Glenwood City, which is on the eastern end of the county. That's right, yep. So, uh, exit 28, I think, and then go north uh, from I-94. And, uh, okay, so that's one thing that's coming up. And you'll be there, so you answer questions, but you help the people who are there grooming their animals and so forth. Yeah, you, you'll probably find me in the barns more than you'll find me in the office down there. Yeah, okay. Then we also have St. Croix Farm City Day. What is that? Yeah, this is going to be the 30th year for doing Farm City Day. First year that I get to be involved with it, it's really exciting. But this is the prime opportunity for someone that doesn't normally get to see a working farm to come out and tour a farm for a day. And so this year it's being co-hosted by two families, the Com and the Van Dyke families. And on the Com farm, you're able to see, walk through the dairy barn, see the dairy cattle. Uh, the Van Dykes have opened up their land so we can do some crop tours and, and see some of the machinery that's being used today for uh, on a modern farm. Uh, but really, if you want to get out there and be on a farm, this is the perfect opportunity to do it. And where are these farms located and when, what date is it? It's going to be on August 13th, it's a Saturday, and both farms are located side by side. Uh, they're northeast of Aaron Corners, uh, which would be just south of New Richmond. Okay, so it's in the flat country. Yeah, and actually they're, they're not too far from the river there, so they, they're right on the transition line there from the, the flat land to a little bit more rolling acres. Okay, very good. So everybody's welcome, is there a charge for that? No, it's a free event, uh, lunch provided, opportunity to take the tours. And really, this is the, the time that the St. Croix County farmers and businesses uh, have picked a team up together to showcase St. Croix County farming. And uh, one of the things that I see more and more in my job, I, you know, nine times out of ten, when you find me in office, I'm working on a farm project or out on a farm uh, working on a project for the cattle or the crops. Mm -hmm. But really, the farmers are more and more realizing the importance of showing the non-farm person what they're doing. Uh, and we can talk about it all we want to, but seeing is believing. Yep. Uh, so they really want to see people that normally wouldn't get to see a farm to be able to come out there and see what they're doing. Yep, I think it's excellent. And uh, if they want to know more, they can always contact you. They can right? give me a call, yep. And he's at... Uh, Ryan is at 715-684-3301 in the extension 5, and that's in Baldwin. Now, there's uh, one thing we had talked about uh, before we came here, and that is preservation of this wonderful farmland. Yeah. Now, if we, if we build from here to Eau Claire on, along the freeway, we basically aren't touching a lot of the beautiful farmland. But what happens when we get out there and we decide to put in... Right, and this is a tough subject, and there's good arguments on both sides of it, but basically it gets down to how do we value farmland? Mm 
-hmm. and what do we want to see for land use I in the long run? Uh, mm -hmm. Not necessarily just the next couple years, but, but are there pieces of farmland, that the prime farmland, that the priority for it should be to stay in farming? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so there, I could go on and on about this, about the different factors that go into it, because it is a complicated issue. But basically it's people on both sides need to give their best argument uh, of how they want to see uh, farmland zoning or, or not do zoning in the future. Uh, but as someone that works with farmers, there is a lot of good farmland here in St. Croix County. Uh, so whether it be government or private, um, we look at some of the land trusts and that, I, I think there's an opportunity for uh, some private groups maybe to, to step up here. Uh, yeah. But now's the time to, to tackle this yeah. issue. Uh, I was looking back and at some of the old farmland plans uh, and I can pick out quotes from the 70s that, that are things I still hear today. So, yeah. so the issue isn't gonna go away. And uh, hopefully the audience will realize how totally important the total value of the farm uh, dollars is to the economy in St. Croix County. And, right. And that, you know, by preserving those farms, we are going to then preserve that, that total amount of dollars that uh, part of our GDP, which yeah. is important. Well, and basically the farmers, most of them, know how to take care of preservation of soil in terms of erosion and that sort of stuff. Right. And I, you help with that too. Right, yep. Uh, yeah. So I, I do a little bit more on the animal side, but definitely on the conservation side. Yeah. There's progress that can be made there, but there's lots of good things being done a, at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it may be different than what we did uh, several years ago. Uh, just the other day, we're at a, a no-till field day for farmers to come in and see uh, how some fields looked after uh, no-till for mm -hmm. 10 or so years of the long-term effects of it and, and there's practices like that that really do conserve the, the soil yeah. uh, which is very very important today very good yeah very good so um, well I hope all of you that have moved out from Minnesota never lived on a farm and now you realize you're in the heart of one of the best farming counties in the state of Wisconsin you can go to the fair or go to county days or uh, get out there and see really how wonderful this is and you have appreciation for the value of the farm production for the economy of St. Croix County. Do you have anything else you wish to add before we close this section? I, I, we covered a lot of stuff, didn't we? Yes. <laughs> and so, and, and there's a lot to talk about. I, I would say, uh, d don't be afraid to go talk to a farmer. Um, take opportunities like Farm City to get out and see a farm. Uh, and just, you know, I, I always, I can't em emphasize enough uh, the farming still is vibrant in St. Croix County. It's very diverse. Uh, you know, it's hard to find two farms that are exactly the same around here. Uh, so that's just one thing you have to keep in mind. But th there's a lot of good farmers out there, and, um, and I think there's a lot of good things that we can do yet in the future. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So good luck, and you're doing a good job. That's wonderful. We're working so on it. <laughs> hope to see you at the fair and at Farm City Day. And feel free to come back anytime. We talk about some more specialized topic. But uh, today it was just a general overview. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for inviting me. You're welcome. And thank you for watching the agriculture section of Western Wisconsin Journal. See you in a month. Thank you.